This is the first annual Vugar Gashimov Memorial in memory of Grandmaster Gashimov who passed away recently. This is the first edition, 2014. Great loss to the chess world and to the human world as well, both. He was a really good guy and a great chess talent. He will be missed. It's funny, the good ones seem to go first. Oh well. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Round 10, the last round of the Vugar Gashimov Memorial 2014. Between the leader of the tournament, current world champion Magnus Carlsen from Norway is white, and Fabiato Caruana, Italian American representing Italy, is black. Magnus goes d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6, g3. You see that a lot now, you see the g3 with the d4 moves. It's kind of a d4 sideline. I kind of like it. It reminds me a little bit of the King's Indian attack. C5, C3, D5. If pawn had taken, pawn takes basically the same. But if you still want the center pawns in the action, you go D5. D takes, castles, castles. Now good luck trying to defend that C5 pawn. A5, that stops that right away. Now the pawn can't come here to defend. And what are you going to defend it with? Queen here? Uh, you know. Bishop e3. That's the only other way to hold it. Knight c6. I don't like that bishop there, but that's the price you have to pay for the extra pawn. Interesting might have been knight to g4. Then after bishop d4, e5. I kind of like that better if you want the truth of it. Knight to c6. Knight a3. A4, clamp down on the B pawn on the queen side even more. Queen to C1, E5, Rook to D1, Caruana goes Queen E7, Knight to B5, it's a small advantage, it's less than a pawn advantage for white, and he's a pawn up, so black's doing well. Bishop e6. I have my Fritz 13 computer on off screen. I'm looking at that. The computer didn't like the b6 at all. What it did like was knight to a5. It liked that a lot. Bishop e6 brought the score up almost to a point and a half for white. Knight to g5. Hitting the bishop. Bishop goes to g4. Knight d. Excuse me. Knight to d6. H takes, or excuse me, H6, pardon me, knight to F3, and king to H7. I kind of like black's position. It's pretty active. If instead black had gone B6, then after knight to E1, bishop takes H6 really doesn't work because after pawn takes, bishop takes, King takes, and of course, black's looking very good. The knight's trapped on d6. After king to h7, h3, kicking the bishop. Computer suggests maybe queen to c2, and then b6, knight, and e4. It's an advantage for white because he's a pawn up, but it's not much of one. And I'll tell you the truth, I like black's position a lot there. For several reasons. One, the knight on d6 is, is in a good spot, but it's not in a good spot, I don't think, at the same time. It doesn't have many places to go, and it isn't really attacking anything vital. After h3, bishop comes back. b4, here come the white pawns. a takes b. Rook takes, queen takes. I know, I think white's got a little bit of a space advantage, especially on the queen side, but I think black's in good shape. Knight to e4. Knight to d2. And Fabiano opens it up. Puts the gun in the chamber and pulls the trigger, f5. 
Computer said d4 must be considered because after bishop takes, d takes, f takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, and pawn takes, that bishop pair is going to be brutal on, on white. It's a half a point advantage for being a pawn up. That might have been the way to go, but I like f5 too. It, it certainly makes the point that I'm not fooling around. I'm coming after this. Knight on 2 takes c4. If knight on 6 had taken d4, queen b1, f4, pawn takes, pawn takes. And actually, black is a pawn down with a small advantage, so that wouldn't have been the way to go. The knight on 2 was the correct move. D takes, queen to b1, f4. Bishop d2 decided not to take. e3 and bishop back to e1. I mean, where's that where's that bishop going? He went from here to here to here to here to here to here. Well, he's still in a good spot, oddly enough. Bishop to f5. Queen to c1. Move the queen again. And h5. If pawn had taken instead... Bishop takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop f6. And that's a lot better for white. A lot better. That isolated e pawn, the isolated b pawn is attacking. Pawns are gone. The two bishops are doing an incredible job of protecting the king. It's not good for black. After h5, f takes, f takes, bishop takes, g, excuse me, queen to g5. Puts the queen right up there. Now it's a huge advantage. I think it's a huge advantage for white. Two and a half points. I think bishop to e6 and b4. It's better. Not by much, but it's better. Carlson is the master at being on his heels a little bit. Maybe not bad, but definitely uncomfortable. And slowly he'll grind you. And all of a sudden you turn around and he's winning. And he's notorious for that. Famous for it. E4 by Carlson. Queen takes the bishop. Rook D3. White has two pawns for a bishop. But he's going to get it back here shortly after Queen H4. Pawn takes. G takes. Now, Black did reconnect his center of black pawns, but... I'm afraid his position might be too far gone. The computer shows it at over two and two-thirds pawns ahead for white. E4. Knight takes is not very good because after E4, rook D6. Knight E5. I think black can hold that. After E4, F takes. Bishop takes. King moves. Queen e3, rook to f4. Fabiano's trying, but I don't think he's going to make it. Bishop g2, queen e7, queen e2, and queen h4. Now, this doesn't look like much has happened, but a lot has happened. One of the black center pawns is gone. White's king is in very good shape. Not any danger at all, in my opinion. Black's knight really can't do much. B4. E4. Knight to D8 really to help trying to get the knight back in the game, because after knight takes knight to E6, and then knight D6 is just... Black's just too far gone. After E4, knight takes knight to E5, White's up two pawns now. Rook to d5. King to g8. b5. Rook f5. Now comes a really, really good move. It's a second choice on the computer, but the Fritz off screen gives it an exclamation mark. c6. It's just finishing him off. b takes... B takes. Now, of course, 
and it's almost a five-point advantage for White. Queen e7, he's scrambling now. Knight to d6, rook to g5. Yeah, it pins the bishop, but there's, what else can he do? He's, he's, he's stuck. There's not enough material for him. His pawns are gone. Rook to f4, it says praying for a miracle, because after queen to d2, rook to f6, rook takes, queen takes, queen to d5, check. Rook to e6, queen takes, rook takes, and you can't stop the pawn. Rook g5, knight b5, queen e6, rook to d8, check, king h7, queen e4, check, rook g6, he blocks with the rook. Last chance for counterplay might have been queen, then after queen, knight, but it's still not even close, it's doomed. c7, Queen a6, queen, a1 check, king f2, b2, king e1, and that's where Fabiano Caruana resigns. Fabiano beat Carlson in a previous round as a double round robin. What will happen after that, give you an idea, is queen takes, queen takes. Now he's up two queens for a bishop. Do you have to go through the rest? <laughs> we will anyway. King, queen checks. Rook d5. Yeah, it's it's over. Anyway, Magnus Carlsen wins the first annual Fulgar Agashimov Memorial 2014. My buddy Carl Nakamura from the United States, I believe, got third on tie breaks. Caruana got second. Nakamura said the last press conference... He wasn't happy with his play, and one of the commentators had a question, and it took a long time. He's the one that finished last the most. And he said because he was getting uncomfortable positions, and he was taking longer to figure them out. He'll have to work on that. I'm sure he will. Anyway, folks, that's it for the Gashmoff Memorial. I hope you liked it. Please check out my other channels as well, John Cordisco Chess and Chess for Amateurs, which I just started a couple days ago. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Please subscribe and please click like. That would be outstanding. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.